Welcome to Front Range Dream Builds. Today Kyle begins to rebuild the second berm at the top of Easy Peasy. This dismal uninviting pile of dirt is basically useless as it stands, but a much needed overhaul should make it a ripping good time that creates a special kind of stokeness. The plan is to widen and extend both the entrance and the exit, connecting the two with a toilet bowl like downhill turn. As with all builds in this type of topography, you must first start by cleaning up the dig area. Silty dirt, pine needles, sticks, pine cones, and ground vegetation must all be removed before beginning to sling dirt. When doing this, you must also consider what is underneath all the debris you have just removed. The top layers of dirt will be mixed with a mulch-like substrate from the decaying debris and needs to be extracted as well. Winter has decided to lightly flex on Kyle. In order to dig, he must first shovel the snow from the dig site and then wait for the area to dry out a little bit. While this is annoying, a little extra work and some patience will create wonderful digging conditions with prime soil that is much easier to work with. The first order of business is to widen the entrance. Chipping away at the step on the left and shaping it into a gradual bank will provide two things. Firstly, it will give the rider more room to navigate away from the tree on the right. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, it will allow for a better entrance into the berm itself. With a few rocks set on top of the berm as a rough guideline, Kyle will begin to dig down the rider's right of the berm. Not only will this generate more dirt to work with, but the lower you dig, the stronger your berm will be. Shaping the ground into the berm itself will create a much harder riding surface and require less packing later. This will also give water a path to follow, keeping it away from the riding surface of the berm. Instead of creating an absurd pile of loose dirt like he did with the last berm, Kyle is going to lightly pack as he builds this time. Packing the first berm was an absolutely dreadful process that took an embarrassing amount of time, and it would be nice to avoid the unnecessary extra labor if possible. Similar to the first berm, Kyle is going to use large rocks to help add structure to the back. However, unlike that berm, Kyle plans to cover most of these rocks with soil to allow for the use of a shovel while packing. Hand packing in between rocks is a bitch, and takes forever to reach its final hardness. To compensate for the wider entrance, it is necessary to reshape the face of the berm, blending the old and new into one cohesive turn. This dirt will be used to start filling in the back and the top. Once enough soil has been added, Kyle will hobbit step his way up and down the top of the berm, using his weight to help pack the new addition of soil. Sometimes it is necessary to give the riding surface a haircut. These small clusters of extremely tiny roots will not be noticed as you blast by on a big bike, but with this type of soil, they will wreak havoc on your final packing, creating loose dusty patches that will deteriorate your berm over time. Putting in the work to remove them now will save you lots of effort in the long run and help to preserve the smoothness of your berm. To prep the berm for its final layers of dirt, Kyle scratches up the face. While this may seem counterproductive, it actually helps the new soil adhere to the old. Loose dirt will not bind with hard packed ground and will result in a super shady berm that nobody wants to ride. Now let the packing begin. To his outright delight, this berm was substantially easier for Kyle to pack. While likely packing as he built did help, shaping the ground into the berm itself was truly the difference maker. After taking a few moments to admire the vast improvements made to the berm, Kyle decided to build up the back a little more and extend the exit to ensure a flowier ride. With the feature now rideable, Kyle made a puzzling alteration to his bike. As I see it, these tires have no business being in the same garage as a beautiful beast like this, but after an exhausting debate on the purpose of cornering lugs, the simpleton hit me with maths that I could not argue. To achieve a hard surface, you need force, and you need pressure. While force is mass times acceleration, pressure equals force divided by surface area. Thinking this way, it is easy to see a hobbit-like creature on an engineless monster with smooth tires generating more force and pressure than a shovel ever could. After countless hours of work, it is finally time to ride. To his credit, the smoother tires allow Kyle to further pack the berm by riding it, and not rip up the face like he would with more aggressive rubber, making it harder and faster with each pass. From massive amounts of hard work and stubborn determination, both berms are now complete. With stokeness levels at full blast, 
We can now move down the line to continue the rebuild of Easy Peasy. Until next time, stack it and pack it, then, grip it and rip it.